I've never beaten Beyond Oasis as a kid. I had it on the Sega channel and a cartridge copy. I wanted to beat it and learn it. I did beat it three times. I played it every day for a week straight while living in a hotel room, and I love every minute of it. I had a blast. Now, as much as I love going back into memory lane with Beyond Oasis, there are some criticisms I have with the game. There are a few things that I've noticed about the game that stick out to me. For example, that I like the game more as a kid or as an adult. Do I feel that the game aged well? Is it outdated by any chance? Would I recommend this game to anyone curious about it? In this video, I will answer those questions about this game and share my thoughts and impressions as a kid and compare them to how I feel about the game now as a grown adult. So the graphics and visuals I noticed as a kid looked wonderful. The colors popped out at me like pop tarts in a toaster. I was very, very impressed. As a kid, I didn't know the Sega Genesis had a limited color palette. So I felt that the game looked very, very vibrant and very colorful. The graphics and visuals still look amazing and wonderful to me. The colors still pop out off the screen as much as I remember them. Every sprite in the game has a great amount of detail and excellent color usage. From the items you pick up, to the NPCs, to the summons that we'll get to later on, textures on the buildings, the enemies, Prince Ali himself all look excellent and still look good. Many areas in Beyond Oasis look gorgeous too. For example, a favorite area visually is the forest. You can see clearly the trees blocking parts of the sun for shade and it looks beautiful. The graphics almost has this Disney game like quality to them. It feels like I'm playing a top down version of Aladdin or something. The bosses look amazing in this game. They have separate animated parts. They are really large and look quite detailed too. My favorite boss is the fire dragon. The enemies in this game look great, but there isn't much variety and they use a lot of color swapping. That's probably because of memory constraints and limitations. The first thing I noticed as a kid was the amazing orchestral style music, especially in the castle. I was like, oh my God, it sounds like an orchestra. Good job to Yuzuro Kashiro on the music arrangements in this game. It definitely brings out a sense of adventure and mystery while you're playing. Honestly, towards the end of the game, some of the music's energy tends to fade a bit, especially the last area of the game. The sound effects in Beyond Oasis sound pretty clear and appropriate for the situations they are in. My favorite is when you are in the castle near the fountain. You can hear the sound of the water in different stereo channels depending on your position on the screen. Let's move to gameplay. As a kid, I noticed that the game felt more like a beat-em-up. I was a very big fan of beat-em-up games, so I felt right at home. It was cool to have a beat-em-up mixed in with exploration and a feeling of going on a big adventure. I did notice the game has very, very little RPG elements to them. For example, the NPCs, non-player characters, don't say much at all and are not very engaging. The story of the game is pretty thin and cliche. There isn't much text during the duration of the game either. I was sort of conflicted with that because I love focused story games and world building. There isn't any shops and you can't upgrade specific attributes of Prince Ali. There are these hearts that you randomly find throughout the game that just increases your hit power and your magic power. So this game is 90% action 
10% RPG, a pure hack and slash game. As a kid, I loved the concept of finding elemental spirits in dungeons and being able to use them to help me. I thought it was pretty cool that you can summon them by using your armlet on whatever element that was needed. I love how the water spirit felt more like a support character while the fire spirit was more suitable for battle. I did notice as a kid that when I acquired the shadow spirit named Shade, maybe the game slowed down for me. Now as an adult, I do feel like the first two spirits are more fleshed out and fun to use while the shadow spirit Shade and the plant spirit bow is very limited in their uses. All four elemental spirits can be used in solving puzzles, while shade and bow are only used for puzzles and obtaining out of reach items. It would have been better if shade and bow were a little more useful in battle. They just feel very limited. They have cool features, but not as cool as the water spirit Daito and the fire spirit Ifrit. You can use both of those elemental spirits offensively and offensively and for puzzles. Speaking of puzzles, I didn't find many of the puzzles too difficult or illogical. Many of them felt the same in all dungeons. Just flick a switch, find a key, light a torch, press a button that opened a door somewhere, extinguish a fire that's in your way, etc, etc. Let's get into how I feel about the controls of Beyond Oasis. I think they're pretty simple, intuitive, and responsive for the amount of actions you can do. You can duck, you can crawl, you can dash, you can jump while changing your trajectory in the air and use weapons while performing some of those actions. I think as a kid, I didn't use the top three buttons on my six button controller pad to access the map, weapon menu, and item menu. Playing the game now, I definitely use the X, Y, Z buttons to access the other menus to select items easily. I noticed that Prince Ali has several special moves with his dagger. There's one special move I had no clue existed as a kid, which is his triple flip move. It has a weird motion that I couldn't get the hang of to use in battle. Most of the time, it just came out accidentally. It is a pretty cool looking move though. Remember when I mentioned briefly about the ability to change your directory or movement in the air while you jumped? Okay, I definitely have a love-hate relationship with that feature. It made it extremely difficult to platform with. I hated platforming in this game. Maybe that's the reason why as a kid I stopped playing it. There are a few dungeons that require you to jump on small blocks to get to certain areas and I absolutely hated it. It was so annoying. My first playthrough had so many jump fails. It got to the point that I looked up a speed run to find a way to avoid an area that annoyed me. Items and weapons in Beyond Oasis are all over the place. Health and spirit increasing items are very easy to obtain and can even be farmed. As a kid, I noticed that in the beginning of the game, you can keep getting cheese when you see your master over and over and over probably a programming oversight. And you can do this in many areas of the game as well. Playing this game now, I use this to my advantage, but I had to keep in mind of the limit of items that I can carry at once. Also, I've noticed that certain enemies can drop certain items if you kill them a certain way. For example, the hedgehog enemies can drop the strongest health item in the game, a roast, if you kill them using fire. There are areas where they conjugate and you can visit over and over and just farm these items. Aside from your dagger, which I think is a pretty good default weapon, there are three other types of weapons that you can pick and choose in Beyond Oasis. Swords, bows, and bombs. I remember as a kid being so excited to try out each of these weapons, but I don't think I fell in love with any of them. Now playing this game as an adult, I feel that the swords are very strong for combat, while the bows and bombs 
are best used for handling puzzles. The bows are slow and the bombs are slow too. The swords have a good range and power, but I did notice that it isn't as fast as using your dagger. All the weapons have a certain number of times that you can use them, which I usually don't like in action RPGs, but it still can be on Oasis, especially since there isn't a shop to buy weapons. As a kid, I thought the island of Oasis was humongous. Just a very large space with lots of places and things to do. Now I don't feel that way anymore. There is a great variety of places, but there isn't that many. Not saying it needed to be larger, but I felt that they didn't utilize or take advantage of the areas in the game. They even block off certain areas at certain points in the game for you won't access them early on. Not much opportunity for exploration. And that's the downside with this game I noticed. It is quite rigid, linear, and scripted. The AI is really bad. Most of the times, I just ran past them to get to where I wanted to go. The only time I would fight the AI if the enemies were blatantly in my way or if I wanted to relieve some stress. Or if I wanted to get an item drop from them. All the dungeons are pretty much the same with a slight amount of variety in the puzzles. Because I never took the time to beat the game as a kid, I was surprised with the few things upon playing it as an adult and clearing it for the first time ever. Number one, I didn't know there was a scoreboard at the end. Similar to clearing Shoot Your Rage, but instead of points, you get a rank or score, gameplay stats, and the length of time that it took you to beat the game or displayed. You can even access this board on the title screen using a certain button combination. Number two, plot wise, without going into spoilers, there is a plot twist that I appreciated. Number three, I didn't know some of the secret areas of the game when I was playing them as a kid. There isn't that many, and you receive some useful items and hidden weapons upon clearing what needs to be done in those areas. For example, there's a race involving the fire spirit that I found to be not very fun. There is also almost like a roguelike 100 floor tower dungeon which I found very challenging. When completing the secret areas, you get an infinite version of a certain weapon. I didn't care for the infinite bombs or bows, but I did want the Omega Infinite Sword that has fire damage. After getting this weapon, I basically slid through the rest of the game pretty easily. And that's actually the next thing I wanted to talk about, the difficulty of the game. After checking out other reviews and thoughts of Beyond Oasis, it seemed like everyone thought the game was pretty easy to complete. And honestly, I did agree with them. The first time I cleared it, it did take me over eight hours. I didn't use any guides or sources of help, just instinct and intuition. I did get tripped up on one of the puzzles in one of the dungeons, and a lot of platforming slowed me down. But beyond that, it wasn't too tricky. There was a few times that I didn't catch where to find certain items to help me during certain fights, but I solved that quickly. After I cleared the game, I looked up some speed run strats and it helped me get a faster time. Now, I did learn that the heart set you obtain throughout the game helps your survival, but does not grant you high rank when you complete the game. So if you want a harder game, don't pick up any hearts. So an average time to clear this game could be anywhere from 5 to 10 hours for new players, but if you run through the game a second time and just focus on getting all the secrets, you may get that same amount as well. If you wanted to play through the game without using any secrets and you want to just focus on speed, you could probably clear the game anywhere from 1 hour and 30 minutes to 3 hours. Things I wish Beyond Oasis had a bit more of? A bit more RPG elements, side quests that shared a bit more lore, and more engaging NPCs. An ability to turn on the end game timer, maybe even a new game plus mode that has a higher difficulty. Maybe even a way to upgrade or learn different special moves. For what Beyond Oasis is of now, I believe it is a very solid game that is worth exploring and worth learning. Beyond a few of its shortcomings, it has aged quite well. It's a hack and slash game that was a decent part of my childhood. I'm glad that now as an adult, I took the time to relearn it and appreciate it much more. I've been learning that in life, some things take a bit of time to fully acknowledge and fully appreciate. 
as I get older, I'm noticing that I'm finding great pleasure revisiting video games that I liked as a kid, but not fully invested much time into. It helped me notice the small things that make Beyond Oasis what it is and respect the time the developers place in creating the game. Maybe I should give the prequel Legend of Oasis on Sega Saturn a shot.